Okay, welcome to part two of this calculator app creation tutorial. This is where we left up off uh, last, last time. We created our view that creates all of our buttons. And then now we're going to create a function for all of the buttons because right now it looks nice, but it doesn't do too much. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create a function that's called each time we click one of the buttons, which will make the whole thing functional. So let's go down here and create our function. And I'm just going to call this uh, button tap function or simply button tap. And when this function is called, we're going to pass it the label of the button which is going to be our underscore button of type string. So that's just how, so we know which type of button was pressed. So when we call this function, we're also going to pass it the label of the button that was pressed so that we know what operation to perform. But because we want to perform different operations for the different types of button, we'll have to check uh, which button was pressed. So we do that with, with a switch statement and we're checking our button. So we're probably going to need uh, three cases, but the first one is going to be, let's see, the first case is going to be uh, one of the operators. Let's see, uh, so either a plus or a minus or multiplier or divide by. And in case it's one of the operators, we're going to do some fancy stuff. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our current operator val variable, uh, current operator. As you can see, this one is currently out of the scope, which makes sense because I managed to create this one outside our view up here. So make sure that you head over to our content view create some space here and then paste our function inside the content view. So now we will have access to our current app operator variable. So we'll continue here. We have set the current operator and we are also going to update our stored value and set it equal to the current input. Just have to convert it to a double first and then set current input equal to simple and empty string. So now we have the case for each, if the user selects one of these operators, first of all, we're going to take notice of which operator was chosen. Then we're going to set the stored value equal to the current input so far. And then we can reset the input as we have now stored it in stored value. So as we'll see, it, in, it will involve some logic here, but. Um, we can also go over it once we've done everything, that will, then it will probably be a bit easier to comprehend. So now we have the case for these. Now we're also going to have a case for when the user presses the equal sign, which will come um, after a while, and then also for a dot or clicks a number. So that's basically the cases we have left. So let's start by creating some cases for those as well. So let's say the case is a equal sign. So when the user presses the equal signs, um, there will be three values. The first one will be the first number he typed, then it will be the operator, and then it will be the number to perform the whole calculation with. So we will have three variables. As I said, the first one, the stored value, then the operator, and then the new input. So we need to check for all those three. And if we have all those three, then we can form the operation. So we're going to check that with an if let statement. If let operator type is equal to current operator. And also let stored value is equal to stored value. And then another one, let current value is equal to current value. And again, this one we need to convert to a double, like so. 
And if all of these three works, that means that we'll have a value for the operator, the stored value, and the current value, which is the three uh, values that we need. I probably have a typo here. Right, we will need the current input. So now we're going to create a input constant or a result constant, which we firstly are going to just give a type. We don't need to fill it with anything yet because we don't have a result yet. Instead, we're going to check for which operator was used and then do the calculation based on which operator uh, is the active one. So now in order to calculate our result, we're going to check for the operator and then to perform the mathematical equation based on which operator we have. So in order to do that, we need another switched uh, statement to check for the operator type. And then it's basically just going to be to list out all of the possible cases, which is going to be four. Either it's going to be plus, minus, multiply, or divide. So in case it is plus, then we're simply going to say that the result is equal to stored value plus current value. So here we have our operation if it's a plus sign. And now we can basically copy and paste this four times and change this to minus, change this to multiply, change this to divide, and then simply change around the operator here as well. Multiply and divide. And then we're also going to need a default case, which is probably not going to be called. And we're just going to call a fatal to be a bit of drama here. We're going to uh, call a fatal error and just give it the error unknown operator, like so. So now if we come so far, we have basically calculated the result and now we can display the result to the user. And we do that by saying, passing the new value to our current input, which as you remember is going to be displayed in our uh, display up here. So our current input is equal to our results, just like that. And then we can set our current operator, reset that one to nil. There we go. So now we basically handed the functionality for our equal button. So basically this is going to be all of the mathematical operations that are going to be possible on the calculator. And as you see, what we basically did was we take the previous value that the user has typed before choosing an operator. So taking the first value, then storing which operator was chosen, and then performing the operation with the value that user type after that. So we're basically, or we're coming close to the end here. We're just going to create another case, which is going to be dot. And in this case, we're simply going to set the current input, which is the number being displayed on the display, and add the button label to it, which is going to be a dot sign. And then we will have a default case so that our switch statement is exhaustive. And that will then mean that we have a number because if it isn't a operator or isn't uh, a dot or comma, then it will be a number. We know that. Uh, so we can set the current input to be equal, plus equal the label of the button. Just had a little typo up here, so let's remove that one. It looks like I've been a bit clumsy here and may manage to get this down here. So let's copy and paste it and paste it up here instead, which is where it was supposed to be. And then I also managed to put this inside our uh, switch statement or the wrong switch statement. So let's cut that out and paste it where it's supposed to be under this one. This one back here has a problem of doing it all live. Uh, let's see where, is where that's supposed to go. And now we should be good to go. So uh, yep, 
So now we can set the display text or the text that's going to be yep, displayed up here. So if the current input is empty, which might be the case, let's see, current input is empty, then we're going to set the display text to display a default value of zero c equal to zero and if it is not empty then we can set the display text to our current input so now it will be cool to get this to work and uh, this function should be uh, operational so now we're just going to have to update our um, little view here and then we can test out. We just need one more function and that is a function if our user presses the clear button and that's going to be pretty easy to create because that's simply going to be to clear out or reset all of the variables. So let's quickly create that one which is we can call clear button and what we're going to do inside here is we're going to set the current. Let's just create this as a proper function. Current input is equal to an empty string. Stored value is equal to nil. Our current operator is also equal to nil. And our display text is equal to zero. So this is basically resetting everything uh, because the reset button was pressed. So now we have all the functions we need. Now we simply need to update our view here, our preview, and then uh, everything should be good to go. So as you remember, I commented out the function down here just to be able to create a preview. So now I'm going to get it back and also here remove the comment so that we have it back and then I'm going to jump up here delete all of this and then I'm going to add the missing argument which is going to be our action and the action that we simply want to pass to our view is going to be the one we just created which we called what do we call it button tap like that so here we have our first row and uh, I've taken a look at the standard calculator and normally it would be 7, 8, 9 and then divided by. So this is our first row for the calculator. We need a few more rows so I simply take it and copy paste it uh, three, four times I would presume and then simply update the button labels for in the way we want it. So perhaps you want your own calculator view. I'm just going to change it uh, to the way I want it for now. And as you can perhaps see, uh, or actually we can now test it out and see if it works. So let's try three plus three equals six, minus two equals four, divided by 2 should be 2 times 100 should be 200 plus 50 so as you can see it works pretty great and the only thing that's missing now is our clear button of course which the function we created down here so all we need to do is basically copy and paste this one more time and remove three of those because we only need the clear button which is going to be one button and the action we're going to pass it is our clear button function but because we defined it in a bit of a different way we're probably going to need to pass it in a closure so I'm going to create a closure here and then uh, write button in and then pass it the function that we created which we called clear button like that. Here we go, two plus two equals four, and then we can clear it out and reset everything. Six plus three equals nine, we can clear it out. And there we have the calculator. 
So that was basically it. it um, it's probably not so complex once you wrap your mind around it or just get the time to look through it. Um, but as I said, we have a, a V here, which creates a row of buttons. We call that four times to get all the buttons and another time to create our clear button. And each time a button is pressed, this function right hole here, <laughs> right here is called our function named button tap. First, we check if it's an operator. And if it's an operator, we perform these uh, operations right here. In case it's an equal sign, that means we're going to perform a mathematical operation. We just have to figure out which operation we need to perform and then perform it and then display the result in the view. In case it's a dot, we simply need to add that to our current value. So 1.5, you see it's simply added to the value that we already have, times 2 for example. We should be up to 3. And in case none of that happened, the default will be to treat it as a number and simply add it to the number that's already there. Uh, and with our clear button, we're simply resetting everything. So that's basically it for this quick little calculator tutorial. Here you have a nice uh, basis to build your own, to do your own fancy stuff from. But this is functional. Uh, this is a good basis to build from and uh, in case you decide to, to uh, improve it from here, then good luck with that and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did and then I will see you back in the next video. Take care.